Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to compute the Robert Jacobi matrix using CMYK plugin in Coplysim. This plugin returns information with elements of the Jacobi matrix, but its elements need to be reordered in order to obtain a matrix whose rows are the constraints of the task and columns represent the joints, ordered from the first to the last joint. If you implement the functions that I propose in this video, you will see how the obtained matrix looks as expected and in the end I hope you save hours of struggling trying to understand what the obtained numbers means because this part of the software is to be honest not well documented or not documented in detail at least. The aims of the video are to explain how to, the Robert Jacobi matrix can be obtained using the CMAK plugin and I will explain how we need to reorder or how we should reorder the elements of the matrix in order to obtain the expected results based on the conventional definition of the Jacobi matrix. In order to get proper calculations we need also to know the orientation of the end effector and that for that reason I'm going to quickly review how to obtain forward kinematics and also how to set up all the elements that the plugin requires in order to compute the Jacobian. To finish the presentation, I will show some numerical examples of the Jacobi matrix computation for a 7 degrees of freedom robot in two specific configurations. We will also see an example in which we will visualize the direction of the instantaneous linear velocity vector uh, at the end effector as a consequence of applying a velocity to the joints. So, by now, you know that we will use the CMAK plugin, which was used in our previous presentation to solve the inverse kinematics problem. Therefore, I recommend you to watch the video before continuing with this presentation. Here, I'm just going to review which are the steps we need in order to proper configure the plugin and give some quick details about the code. But if you want to find more details, uh, please uh, watch my previous video about the inverse kinematics. Remember that you must create an AK environment, also create a set of dummies for the base, tip and target, as well as a set of AK joints according to the position and orientation of robot joints in the Copilesim scene. Furthermore, we must establish the appropriate hierarchical uh, relationship between all AK elements. And in addition to this, we must configure the AK group with the appropriate parameterization to solve the problem, that is the type of algorithm, number of iterations and above all the type of constraints we impose to our problem. Here uh, I will assume that we solve the full problem, that is the one that establishes three position and three angle constraints to reach a specific pose. In this code I create an AK environment, three dummies, for the base, tip and target and set uh, the AK joints or create the AK joints. In particular, AK joints take an actual position values of robot joints and it's important to remark the difference between the variable AK joints and joints. The first one contains handles of AK elements while the later contains handles of Copelisim scene objects. At the end of this code I call the function get an that returns a transformation matrix of the end effector by computing the forward kinematics. This transformation is used to set the position and orientation of the tip and target. Details about this function will be shown later. Once AK dummies and AK joints have been created, we need to set a proper hierarchical relationship between the AK elements and create an AK group to indicate the type of task we want to solve, a six-dimensional post task, let's say. It is important to remark that robot Jacobian will depend actually on the type of constraints we use here. In this particular example I'm using the CMAK constraint pose, as you can see in the last uh, line of code, in order to obtain the full robot Jacobian matrix. The AKDH function uh, that I include here uh, allows to obtain the homogeneous transformation matrix using uh, the novit hardened parameters. This is actually very similar to what we saw in a previous video regarding with the forward kinematics, but in this case I'm using AK joints position values 
which means that we can set multiple configurations and compute the Jacobi matrix without actually moving the robot in Copelisim scene. The getAN function allows to obtain the transformation matrix of the, final, of the end effector uh, with respect to the robot base. Once the plugin is configured and all previous functions implemented, then we can compute the robot Jacobian. First, we call the function CMK compute Jacobian, and in case of returning a true value, then we call the function CMK get Jacobian. This second function returns two values. The first one is a table with all elements of robot Jacobian, and the second one is another table with the dimension of the Jacobian. Specifically, the number of elements of in the Jacobian uh, or in the table uh, regarding with the Jacobian is equal to the number of joints multiplied by the number of constraints in X, Y, Z, etc. The order in which these elements are ordered it is indicated here in this slide. And as you can see, we need to provide the Jacobian matrix form, or we, we should provide the Jacobian in a matrix form if we want to use it for further computations. Actually, the function getJacob implemented in, in the code I'm showing here allows to obtain the Jacobian in matrix form. The result is a matrix which has as many columns as robot joints and as many rows as constraints imposed by the task. The first column corresponds to the first of robot joints, while the last column corresponds to the last robot join. For a post problem, as the one that we configured before, the first three rows correspond to the position constraints, while the last three rows correspond to the angle constraints. It is important to mention that the Jacobi matrix returned by Copilisimi, it is actually unconventional matrix to say the least. I have been analyzing the values uh, that it returns and the conclusion I, I, I get is that the position constraints are just as we expect. They are referred actually to with respect to the robot base, but the angle constraints somehow they are referred to the end effector frame. And for that reason we must perform a rotation of the last three rows using the forward kinematics. This transformation is implemented in the lens lines of this code I'm showing here, just before returning the J variable. Now we're going to check the numerical values obtained uh, for a robot in the, uh, with 7 degrees of freedom at a specific configuration. So in the figure on the left we can see the robot and the set axis of the reference frames associated to joint positions. These are the, blues, the blue arrows that you can see in the figure. At the base of the robot, you can see the X and Z axis of the robot base. The first row of the Jacobi matrix represents the X axis constraint of the end effector with respect to the robot base. It is indicating that variations of joints of the second joint, fourth joint, and sixth joint can generate a linear speed in the X direction. Due to the direction of rotation of the joints, a positive rotation speed would imply a negative linear uh, velocity in the end effector. On the other hand, joints 1, 3, and, and 5 affect the linear movement in the y direction. And also you can see that the rotation of the joint or the fifth joint implies a rotation in the x axis, while uh, a velocity in the seventh joint affects to a rotation or an angular velocity in the z uh, axis. Here we can see another example with the robot in a different configuration. In this case, I have modified the position of the sixth joint, and it can be seen now that joints 5 and 7 are the ones that allow a rotation in the x axis, while now only joints 1 and 3 allow the rotation or a rotation in the, in the z axis. Coefficients that appear in the y row are now somehow larger than before because the robot arm is extended and thus the distances to the rotation axis uh, are greater and that's why the coefficients are also greater. Finally, we are uh, trying to visualize the instantaneous linear velocity vector that uh, we would have at the end effector for a specific configuration. So the configuration doesn't move but what we're going to do is to uh, modify the velocities of the joints 
with these sliders. So when we move to the left to the slider, we are actually applying a negative velocity in this case. So let's play the video. And as you can see here, I'm applying a negative velocity on uh, the first joint and, an, and a, it appears as a negative uh, velocity in, in uh, the y-axis. This is a negative velocity of the second joint and, uh, and you can see it's normal to the, uh, in this case, to the, the, the radius that it's created with the joint and, uh, and the end effector. That was the third uh, joint. And now we are going to move the fourth joint, which is similar to the second one, okay, as you can see. And then the fifth one, which will imply another rotation in the, uh, the uh, velocity, in this case in the y-axis again. And this is the sixth joint, this will imply a velocity in the x-axis. And the last joint will not have any kind of effect on the linear velocity, because of the orientation it has. Okay. Well, in this video I have explained how to compute the Robert Jacobi matrix in Copilacin using the CMAK plugin. Thank you very much.